and blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning we want to transition over to the word of the living God. We want to hear what uh, the Lord has to say unto us. Uh, my name is Brother Virgil C. Passad. I'm the pastor here at the Bride Age Christian Fellowship here in Orlando, Florida, United States of America. We are broadcasting through our website at www.brideagechristianfellowship and then we'll uh, post our messages on our YouTube channel which is the Bride Age Christian Fellowship YouTube channel and also we do have some uh, messages um, on, uh, on, on Rumble and um, I could always leave the link in our, at our website, the link to our Rumble services. Um, um, so may God bless you this morning. Uh, may, may you hear from your father this morning. May he touch you. May he give you the desire of your heart and whatever is your need this morning. You come this morning for healing. There's healing in his wings this morning. You come for blessings this morning, physical, financial, so, and most of all, spiritual blessing, he has come with a cup and pour it into your cup full and overflowing this morning. What the psalmist David said, my cup overflow. So just yield yourself unto him. You make mistakes, yes, sure. Put it under the blood and yield yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, because um, you know, there's uh, nothing more important in the world but to make sure you serve him, you worship him. The time is at hand, brother. The time is at hand. Prophecies are taking place right in front of very eyes. So this morning we like to turn to four portions of scripture. And um, you'll have to bear with me. I also operate my, my whole system right on my, around my little pulpit here. So you have to bear with me as I uh, endeavor to put the, uh, the, um, the script, scriptures on the screen for you to see. Four portions of scriptures we're reading in Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14, verses 1 to 15. Job chapter 14, verses 1 to 15. Job chapter 14, verses 1 to 15. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. I'm trying to get my mouse over and it's, I don't know where my mouse is. Oh, here it goes. Uh, one second. All right, so there we go. And then the other scripture, St. John, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 5, 25 to 29. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 25, sorry, chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. Um, bear with me one second. Here we go. Uh, view. Let me get you on a bigger screen. Uh, full screen. Here you go. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. And we do have some other... Scriptures, as you see in the bottom there, we have some reference scriptures. Reference scriptures, uh, Daniel 12, 1 to 3, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8, St. John 11, 25 to 29. And there may be other scriptures that I'll be referencing to. Other scriptures I'll be referencing to. Um, bear with me one second. Glory to God. Amen. Bear with me. Just have to write something here. All right. So let's read from the first scriptures, Job 14, 1 to 15. Job 14, 1 to 15. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth almost as a shadow, and continueth not. And dost, thou, and dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, 
Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hiling his day. For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof, thereof will not cease. Though the root therefore wax old in the earth, and the stock therefore die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like a plant. But a man dieth, and wasteth away. My yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? As the floods, as the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dried up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. But that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret, until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a time and remember me, that thou, oh, I'm gonna, that thou, uh, sorry, that thou mayest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have this desire to the work of thine hands. For now thou numberest my steps. Dost thou know watch over my sin? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, reading up to verse 15. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the works of thy hands. And somewhere again, uh, um, Job said, you know, though the skin worms eat this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. So let's read 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15. Sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, sorry. Verses 51 to 57. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God through which give us which give us, us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the book of St. John, the book of St. John, chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. <clears throat> verily, verily. Yeah, hold on one second. Okay, uh, verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. <clears throat> For as the Father had given in himself, so had he given to the Son to have life in himself, and had given him authority to execute judgment also, because, because the, he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, at this, for the hour coming in which all... So now you notice there are two things. There are two resurrections Jesus is talking about here. He said, those that are in the grave will hear the voice of God and come unto everlasting life. And here he's saying another group of people. All that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So you see there are two resurrection Jesus was talking about and the last scripture first Thessalonians chapter 4 reading from verse 13 to verse 18 but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that we sorrow not even as others which have no hope but if we believe that Jesus died and rose again 
even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, and in this case wouldn't mean it means hinder, them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with a voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, if you notice closely, there's a shout, there's a voice, there's a trump. But before all that takes place, before the voice of the archangel, the sleeping saints, the dead in Christ shall rise first. <clears throat> Amen? So shall we pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we have read your word, Lord, and your word is life. And, and I'm sure now the believers have seen, Lord, that the theme that is going from <clears throat> the book of Job and Corinthians and John and Thessalonians and Job speaking of something and the same thing, a resurrection and, <clears throat> and in Corinthians and so on, Lord. And Lord God, we know, Lord God, anyone could read this Bible who has an a understanding of reading and in whatever language, and they could read it, Lord. And they could read it with an intellectual conception, Lord. But it only takes you, great author of this word, to come forth and reveal this word, Lord, and quicken it to your people, Lord, that they may hear and understand. Father, touch their ears in a special way today. And those who ears have been clogged and can't hear the word, open up those ears today, Lord, yeah. that they may hear the word and come to you, Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you have preeminence, Lord, amongst your people. And your servant stand here that is in need this morning. Lord, uh, Lord God, uh, move me out of the way that you would speak unto your people and they would understand that is not my words, Lord. And Lord God, that they will respect your presence and respect your gift, Lord, and, and how you have come down. Because your prophet, Lord of God, the prophet said that, uh, you know, which is great, an angel that comes just like that, or an angel that stands in the presence of God, that anoint a minister to speak the word, is the one who anoint the uh, minister to speak the word, because he comes directly from the throne of God. And Father, we felt this angel that came directly from the throne of God, and he's here to quicken the words of the people. He has brought a band of angels that will go to every believer, Lord, and whisper the words of love and words of comfort and words of life to the people. Bless everyone, we pray, and may you have preeminence. And, this bro and our brother um, from Uganda, Lord, and um, that uh, requested prayer for his dad. I can't pronounce his name, but Lord God, I pray for him, O oh Lord Jesus. I pray that you touch him. I pray that you, uh, you, you heal him, Lord, and enforce, send the angel of God, and may this brother, his dad, be uh, healed, Lord. Enforce the healing, Father. And may he write a testimony saying that from this moment on, uh, he was this, uh, the man was totally well. Father, I understand he might be a believer, and if he's a believer, then Lord is the children's bread. And if he's not, Father, then you open up his eyes that he may see the word and recognize you. Grant it, O Lord Jesus, and bless the, our precious brother who requested a prayer. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. So this morning, this morning for our title, as you see on the screen, for our title, Call to the resurrection by the voice of the archangel. I know I've spoken on this topic so many times, but I want to really reiterate it this morning. I want you to understand where we are this morning. What are we looking for? Amen? We are looking for uh, sp some special promises that God has made, on, made unto us <clears throat> by revealing unto us these seven steps of the rapture. That's what we're looking for. There are seven uh, steps or seven phases, or however you want to call it. Seven, uh, you know, one flows into the other. I just identify them, and this happened in, in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2021, from June, <clears throat> June to August. God had me identify these seven steps. Amen. And if you could see these seven steps, then you'll understand where you are this morning. So call to the resurrection by the voice of the archangel. Call to the resurrection by the voice of the archangel. Amen. 
And then what is our subject? Our subject has always been our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the subject of this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. He's the subject of this Bible. Amen. And the subject is Jesus Christ is the voice of the resurrection. Now Job said it. He said, I will listen for that call. You will call me. So there's a call to the resurrection. And then Jesus said, those are sleeping in the, in the, in the grave will hear the call. Amen. And will rise up to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So there's a call. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, there was a call went out. Amen. So, and what is our inspiration? What is this call, Brother Virgil? What is this call to the resurrection? What resurrection are you talking about? No, I may not be able to cover the whole thing today because this is a very long topic for me to give you point by point and show you the revelation of God. But it takes only the Holy Spirit to reveal it unto you this morning because I may, I may say the words, but it only takes Him. Amen. I can't save anybody. I could, all I could do is to stand in the gap here and let this Holy Spirit speak unto you that you will be, uh, be get closer to me. You are His children, you know. What did Jesus said? Who is greater? The one who sit at meat to eat or the one who is serving? Is the one who sit at meat. Like I told a brother, a young brother in our last church. He said, oh, the mighty minister, mighty deacon, mighty. I said, no, 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 brother. I said, when you go to a restaurant, amen, who is greater? You who sitting on the, the table and telling the waiter what you need or the waiter that is coming to serve you? He said, oh, no, me. I said, well, it's the same way, brother. We are God's unprofitable servant. And we're here to serve you a seven-course meal this morning that you may your spiritual stomach be filled. May you be bubbling over with the, the anointing of your whole, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and like I said, we are a very small group here in uh, Orlando, Florida. I actually operating out of our home. Because of, because of the pandemic, you know, we couldn't get a place. We can't afford a place. So believers, whoever you all are, are welcome. Amen. So you call me up. You look at my website. I have my phone number. If you want a fellowship, it's uh, up, operating out of our home until God tell us that we move out. We get enough people. But uh, we broadcast to about almost 150 countries. I remember that surprised me. That was the most we ever broadcast to. 150 countries or towns or whatever it may be. But, uh, but the, the, the point is, I'm not telling you, my brother and my sister, to leave your church. I'm not telling you to forget what your pastor have done and leave your church and, and, come, and come in my church. No, 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 no. Our church is, the, the, you know what the ceiling of our church is? The ceiling of the Bride Age Christian Fellowship is the sky. That's the ceiling. That's the, the roof of our, of our church. And what, where are the pews, brother and sister? The pews are wherever you are sitting this morning. That's the church. You are the church. What is a church? A church is not physically a building according to the Bible. That's a place that the church assemble to come to talk to the Lord and to hear from the Lord. It's a place of assemble. But which is more important? The people that are, that are called out, are, that are there in the church, that are looking to hear from you, for hear from the Lord, or the church building? No, it's the people who hear who are there to listen to the Lord. So the church of the living God is, uh, is all over the world. And God has anointed um, us here to preach this word, not to draw members out of your pastor or your church. Go right ahead. Go and, uh, you know, pay your tithes and your offering or whatever you have to do and to honor what, what God is doing. But, you know, <clears throat> if you are being fed, wherever you're fed, if you are fed in different places and you are enjoying the services and God is doing something for you, you should contribute for that uh, ministry to continue on. I'm not the one to go out there and say, um, you have to send me money. And you're, No, I'm not. I'm, I'm God will lay upon whoever's heart and would send us uh, <clears throat> to help us support. Our expenses are a lot. We have a lot of, especially around this, coming in this uh, beginning of the year, there's a lot of renewal. We have to pay what you call SSL, SSL, SSL certificate and, and, and fees for transmitting and web fees. And uh, it costs. And, uh, but God has been blessing us. And we thank those who have, who have uh, <clears throat> you know, um, have contributed and helped us. And God bless you. We had some uh, precious couple from... Um, Canada helped us, um, a sister from down, um, not really even a member of our church, but down in uh, somewhere down Florida here, helped us. And then people, uh, a, bro a brother from Trinidad, sometime where 
uh, go, my precious brother, that we fellowship with help us. So, so we are blessed by God's grace. And um, so, and then, uh, you know, I have a, a mechanic friend that come, Christian believer. And when I started to witness him and so on, and he, he said, well, brother, I'm blessed by what you're saying. Here's something to help you carry on the ministry. So it's a blessing. Because let me, let me let you know something. Now, I, I've never done this before, and this is very strange. He's asking me to lay my heart, my heart to do this. Let me explain to you. If you give unto the Lord, you could never outgive the Lord. Never. But if you give unto the Lord, if you make that sacrifice, if you have piles and piles of money all over the place and you give, it's good. God will still bless you. But if you make a sacrifice and you give on to the Lord, God from heaven sees that sacrifice and he will tell the angel, go and prosper that person there because of that sacrifice that person made. Amen. And this is what we believe, that God will bless you. It's not a pull for money no, brother. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. The scripture says, bring your, your, your tithes and offering to the storehouse of the Lord and see if God will not open the windows of heaven. He said, why do you think you have a hole like in your pocket? Why do you think so? Because you're not giving of your substance unto the Lord. You're not giving to me, brother. You're not giving to me, sister. You're giving to the furtherance of the gospel. I have so many, um, so many um, notifications from all people from Africa and India and all over the world. With, 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 uh, and here in America, with, uh, they're so blessed by what God is doing. Amen. So may God bless you. So, so what is our inspiration? Our inspiration, what is this call to the resurrection? And how do we recognize this voice? Because a call comes out of a voice. You know? So we must know what is this call to the resurrection and how do we recognize this voice? So what I'm saying here today, brother, this is a, a very vast topic. It will take me hours and hours um, if the Lord give me strength to really go into all the details, but I'll have to, you know, just touch on the main points and pray that God reveal it and open it up to you. Amen. So what, what are we talking about? Everyone is talking about the rapture. Everyone is saying that the Lord is coming. Everyone believes that the rapture is when Jesus comes in and uh, appears in the sky. Everybody believes that. But that's not the rapture only. The rapture is 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Uh, uh, first Thessalonians 13 to 18. That is the rapture. What is the rapture? What is Paul is saying here? He says, What? The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. One part, the voice of the archangel. Second part, uh, the, the sleeping saints rise. And then the trump of God. And then we caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So I want to, to let you uh, know what God had revealed to me. Way back in 2021, from June 2021, God gave me a revelation of the rapture, of what that rapture is, how, what, it, what it involves. Now, uh, many ministers preach different parts, but I want to identify it to you. And I want to bring this to you this morning, if you would bear with me. Um, if I'll take this out here now, and you will get the other, um, the revelation of the rapture. And let's get the view, compute view here full screen all right so if you'll notice on your screen is a revelation of the rapture and here's a series of messages I preached on the rapture first Thessalonians 4 16 and 17 and it's in seven parts now you would find you'll find I should have put a note here you'll find all these messages in the on the bride age Christian fellowship um, and uh, let me just uh, see if I could do that Maybe I might be able to just type it in here. Let me just, my mouse is a little, let me just put it, all these messages are on, are on the bride. Age Christian Fellowship YouTube Channel. So just go, please uh, um, visit 
and subscribe. Okay, so we got it in there for you. Let me make it a little bigger. So I should have put this a little for you, uh, but let me make it a little bigger here for you. Uh, oh, too big. <coughs> 20 is good. 18 is good. Okay, there you are. Oh, let's say 18, let's do 18. All right, there you are. So since all these messages that you see right here on your screen is uh, on the YouTube channel. Amen. They were preached back then. But of course, there were other messages that follow that, those messages that give it a little more explanation. So this morning, I want to talk, I'll do a summary. Before you could understand the call to this resurrection and to how to recognize his voice, you have to understand what the rapture is. So I'll do a quick summary. I'll have to run it through pretty quickly. But if you could take all this information down, you know, take a screenshot or whatever you need, the, the, the revelation is in seven parts. Amen? So let's, let's read what... The, uh, um, we're going to read some quotes out of a, a, a quote out of a, a minister, a man that was born in 1909 and he passed away in 1965, went to meet the Lord. His name is Brother William Marion Branham. He's a messenger to the seven church age. Now you say, well, Brother, Brother Virgil, what, what do you mean messenger? Well, Revelation chapter 3 verse... Uh, 14 to 22 tells you, uh, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3 tells you about seven church ages. So since Jesus died and, and rose again, the Gentile age was divided into seven church ages. And these seven church ages, uh, you will read it out in Revelation chapter, you'll read it out in Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, and you'll find in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 to 22, will be the seventh age. You know, everyone knows that we're in this last church age. Everyone knows we're in the end. Everyone knows we're in the Laodicea church age. Amen. And the first church age was Ephesus. The, minister, the, the, the messenger to that age was Paul. Then Smyrna was uh, Arrhenius. And then Pergamos was Martin. Tyrateria was Columbia. Uh, Sardis was Luther. And Philadelphia was Wesley, and for the Laodicea church age was Brother William Marion Branham. Now you say, well, why are you saying that, brother? Well, you got to understand that we have to get ready for the rapture. Somebody must tell us how to get ready for the rapture. Somebody must, must say, behold the Lamb of God, or behold the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And just as John the Baptist, for on the first coming of Christ, uh, your me uh, 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 there must be a messenger to for on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on June 11th, 1933, while Brother William Marion Branham in uh, Jeffersonville, Indiana, was baptizing the 17th person by the name, the person's name was Edwin Colvin, a ball of fire came down and hung over that, the waters. Amen. And a voice came out of that fire and said as John the Baptist was sent forth to for on the first coming of Christ, your message shall cover the earth and for on the second coming of Christ. Amen. So Brother William Marion Branham demonstrated by signs, wonders and miracles that he was this messenger. We, we looked across the world. We had Billy Graham. We had all the Roberts. They are wonderful preachers, but did they teach us how to get ready to, for the rapture? Are they a manifestation of Revelation chapter 10 verse 7? Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 said <clears throat> that, uh, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel messenger, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God will be finished as he has declared unto his servants the prophets. So the, the messenger of Revelation chapter 3 Chapter 3, amen, of Laodicea must be a prophet. Revelation chapter 3, 14 to 22. He must be a prophet according to Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Also a prophet that says, Behold, I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way. So uh, uh, then you say, well, Brother Virgil, why are you reading from what he preached? Well, when Brother Branham preached these words, the pillar of fire, would go into the audience and discern the people's hearts, tell them where they're from, tell them who they are. And Brother Branham doesn't know them at all, but it is the Holy Spirit. And what, what happened? Signs, wonders, miracles took place. The blind see, the deaf hear, the crippled walk, the dumb speak, the dead was raised. But most important of all, 
When Brother Brown spoke these words, the Holy Spirit went into the heart of the people, convict them of sin, that they come running to the Lord Jesus Christ, asking for repentance and becoming children of the King. Amen. Coming back to Him. Amen. And that's the most important thing this morning. Healing is wonderful. I, I want to be totally healed. I know you want to be totally healed. But if you had a choice, I, you could be totally healed or may your soul be totally healed. I would want my soul to be totally healed because you could, God, the Lord Jesus could heal you of the cold and then you'll get, uh, you know, you'll get uh, diabetes or he will heal you of high blood pressure and then you might get some uh, arthritis, you see. But if you are healed of the soul, oh, glory to God. And that baptism of the Holy Spirit comes down inside your soul. Oh, you're free for all eternity. Not a devil in hell could claim you no more. Because Jesus Christ died on Calvary. And when he died on Calvary, his blood shed upon the earth. And because of that, there's a sacrifice for you that you could put your hand by Calvary and you could call upon him. You could say, Lord Jesus, I make mistakes. Lord Jesus, I've sinned. I've done wrong. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. Forgive me for my mistakes. And as you cry out to him, down would come that blood and cover all your sins because it's already shed on Calvary. It just must cover your sins. Your sins must be remitted. You go down down to the water baptism. You must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then what he did, he said, but he promised you the Holy Ghost afterwards. Amen. And what is the Holy Ghost? You know, oh, your, your, your heart was full of sin. All kind of evil spirits were living in there. There was lying and cheating and adultery and cursing and murder and, and, and anger and all these things were living in your heart. Those were demons. Those were evil spirit. But when God cleanses you, every one of the demons leave. But that place is empty. Something must come in there and abide. And that's what comes into you and abide. Who abide? The Holy Spirit. He abides. He abides. Hallelujah. He abides with me. Amen. So the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then your eyes are open to understand revelation. Before that, you won't understand revelation. All you will understand, the most you would understand, is that you have been, you know, a sinner. And God could save you. But when that Holy Spirit comes, then revelation pours upon you, brother and sister. And then you walk in the light of the hour. Not in the light of the old days. The light of the hour. So, um, I don't know how I got in that direction. But uh, may God help you this morning to understand that the rapture is at hand. Now, the rapture is not just a, when Jesus Christ appeared in the eastern skies. The rapture is not that only. That is a part of the rapture. Remember we read in First Thessalonians 4, um, um, uh, 13 to 18. Remember we have identified there are certain parts of this rapture. There's a shout. Amen. And so on. So I want to, and as you see on the screen here, the, uh, the Lord give me inspiration that the rapture is divided into some parts. Now let me read a quote for you this morning. Just want to keep track of the time. Let me read a quote for you this morning. The rapture, Yuma, uh, Saturday the 4th of December 1965. Now, brother and sister, this was uh, fourth, was the fourth, this was 21 days before Brother Branham died. 21 days before he died. Um, here's what he's saying to the church. No, 21 days before he died. Paragraph 65. But to the church, the bride. The rapture is a revelation to her. It's revealed to her that the revelation, the true bride of Christ will be waiting for that revelation of the rapture. So Brother Branham, 21 year, days before he died, is telling the bride, you got to wait until you get the revelation of the rapture. And now when you get a revelation of the rapture, hear what he says. No, it's a revelation for the revelation is faith. So when you catch the revelation of the rapture, you catch in faith. You cannot have a revelation without it being faith. Faith is a revelation because it's something that's revealed to you. Faith is a revelation. Faith is something that has been revealed to you like it was to Abraham that could call anything contrary to what had been revealed to him as though it wasn't so. Now faith, that's what faith is, is the revelation of God. The church is built upon a revelation. The whole entire body. End of quote. So Brother Branham is saying, that we were supposed to, since 1965, 
catch a revelation of the rapture. Amen. And this is the inspiration that God gave me for 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 16 to 17. That I believe the revelation is in seven parts. Part one is prophecies, promises, and revelation. That means to say that before you could know what you're going to get or what is going to happen, it must be prophesied to you. It must be preached to you. It must be a promise to you. You must catch a revelation of what is going to happen. A lot of people sit back and they don't know that there's going to be a rapture. So you must have a revelation and experience of what God is going to do in terms of the rapture. Now you say, well, how do you tie that to Brother Brown's message? Well, in 1962, before the rapture broke out, 1962, Brother Branham had a revelation. He had a dream. He had dreams. He had vision. He was expecting. He was what? He was under, there were prophecies. There were promises and there were revelation. Amen. So that's the first part. You must understand that. You must understand the prophecies, the promises and the revelation. But then what took place? The number two part is that the shout of the king was in the camp. So when Brother Branham died, Amen. There was a man that stepped out and said, Brother Branham's message was the shout of the king and it's in the camp. So what we're looking at, what was the shout message? The shout message is when Malachi 4, 5 and 6 came out, Brother Branham came out with a shout message. Now, the next step according to the Bible, the next major step was the voice of the archangel. So what happens between the shout of the king or the shout of Brother William Marion Brother message to the voice of the archangel. I call it the breach, or I call it the transition. Something has to take place from when Brother Branham gave us a promise and said, the voice of the archangel is coming. The voice of the resurrection is coming. Something must take place from since Brother Branham is gone until the voice of the archangel, which will be formed in us. Amen? Which is Christ in us. So the call to the resurrection is the voice of the archangel in us. Amen? So we are looking for that breach of the shout and the voice of the archangel. And then when we understand what is in there, that, sh that breach, then you come to the voice of the archangel, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, which is Christ now, the voice of the resurrection. Amen? And then, uh, but then the next step is the what? Is the trump of God. So what happens between the voice of the archangel and the trump of God? The sleeping saints rise up. They are walking upon the earth. There's a 40-day resurrection ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what's, the, what's the, the fifth step? The fifth step is the voice of the archangel to the trump of God. That's the fifth step. So you must understand what happened from the voice of the archangel, which is a call to the resurrection, to when well, Gabriel comes and blows the trump for you to get to, to uh, call to the wedding supper. So the sixth part is... The trump of God, the call to the wedding supper. The sixth part is the, call, the trump of God, a call, the call to the wedding supper. In other words, that this trumpet is going to blow, according to 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it's going to blow and you're going to be summoned to the wedding supper. I'll read the quotes that Brother Abraham said. You'll be summoned to the wedding supper. So that's what the, the, the trump of God is. And Brother Abraham said, Gabriel blows the trump. Also the trump of God, and we'll go preach it. You will go to the messages and you see it's the trumpet to the Jews, the seventh trumpet to the Jews. And then the part seven is what? When the trumpet is being sounded, it's 30, 40 days resurrection ministry. Jesus Christ will appear in the sky in Jerusalem. We all will be all gathered there in Jerusalem. Jesus Christ will appear in the sky and then we'll be caught up to meet him in the air and then we'll go to the wedding supper. So brother and sister, that is the summary of the rapture. Now we're going to talk a little bit about call to the resurrection by the voice of the archangel. That's what we're going to talk. So we're talking about um, uh, part, uh, part, uh, part three and part four. Now we're looking to become the voice of the archangel. Now not me and you, but Christ in you to become the voice of the archangel. Now let's, let's read what Brother Branham says here in the rapture. Um, this is paragraph 52, 152. Now it's the first thing is a sounding. The first thing is a trumpet or a voice, a shout, and then a voice, and then a trumpet. Shout, a messenger are getting the people ready. The second is a voice of the resurrection. The same voice, but a loud voice in St. Peter 11 38 to 44 that call Lazarus from the grave. 
getting the bride together, and then the resurrection of the dead. So you see, Brother Branham here is identifying the voice of the archangel is that shout, getting the bride together, and, to, and then the resurrection of the dead. So that voice of the archangel is going to be veiled in the bride. She's the final voice to the final age. Amen? Hallelujah. Getting the bride together and then the resurrection of the dead. See? To be caught up with it. Now watch the three things take place. What is next? Was a trumpet. A voice. A shout. A shout. A voice. A trumpet. Now the third thing is a trumpet. Which always at the feast of the trumpet is calling the people to the feast. And that will be the bride's supper. The lamb's supper with the bride in the sky. See? Hear what Brother Abraham say? Amen. He said that, sh that trumpet sound. And, and I have so many quotes to tell you, Brother Abraham says it's Gabriel. That's the call to the wedding supper. Amen. Uh, paragraph 164. Therefore the message calls the bride together. See? The shout. So what happens in the second part that we are talking about here? And I could bring it. Uh, let me close up back this. So we could get me back on the screen. And uh, All right. So I hope you were able to take all that information down. So what we're talking about here is that a messenger in the shout, which is William Bradham, calls the bride out. And then the voice, hear what Brother Bradham said, let's read it. Paragraph 164. Therefore the message calls the bride together. See, the shout and the trumpet. Now the same one, he, with a loud voice, he screamed out with that shout and a voice and woke Lazarus. With a loud voice he cried, Lazarus, come forth. See? And the voice wakes up the sleeping bride, the sleeping dead. You hear what I'm saying? So a voice does what? A voice calls the sleeping saints out of the grave. Brother Abraham say, the voice wakes her up. No, he did say it draws the sleeping saint out. But here Brother Branham is saying the voice wakes up the sleeping bride. And the voice will be where? The voice will be veiled in the bride of Jesus Christ as the voice of the archangel. And that she will develop into a perfect man and a perfect woman and the bride of Lord Jesus Christ will, will uh, be that voice of the archangel. Amen. No, not you, but with Christ in you. Let's read it. And the trumpet, with the sound of a trumpet, and when it does, it calls. Always a trumpet call Israel to the feast of the trumpet. See? Which was a Pentecostal feast, the great feast in the sky, and the feast of the trumpets. And now a trumpet do announce a calling together. Come to the feast. No. Now that is the Lamb's Supper in the sky. Now watch. The assembling together. The bride, the feast of the trumpets, the wedding supper. We see it in types. Now watch us a moment. Amen. Hear what Brother Abraham say. Jesus being the keystone now, he bear record. He was the keystone between the Old and New Testament because he had first to die and then rapture. He died, came to life, walked around here with us, and then was raptured up because he was the keystone that tied the two together. After his resurrection. Now look after what he did. And prove the Old Testament there. We all know Enoch was translated. We know Elijah was taken up by a whirlwind. That's right. In a chariot of fire. And Jesus died. Buried. Rose up. Lived here on the earth. And then was raptured up. The keystone. There is three to be a record. Is that right? Now there has been one rapture already passed. You know that? Now let's see if we can read it. it fi in, fi in Matthew 27. Abraham say, now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Ila, Ila, Labata Shani, which is to say, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them stood by, heard it, said this man, call it for Elias. Amen. And then, and Jesus, when he had cried with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. A loud voice, loud voice. Now watch, this is what Brother Abraham said, loud voice. When Jesus died, screamed with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. Amen. And behold, the temple of the veil, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks did rent, and the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints that slept arose, of course, after his resurrection, and went to the holy city and appeared unto many. One rapture is passed. See? And the second rapture is fulfilled in First Thessalonians 4, chapter 4. Amen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. That will be the second rapture. The second rapture will be the catching away of the bride. Watch the shout and the voice over here. The same as is coming. See? 
He yielded up the ghost, Jesus. And when he did, the sacrifice was perfect. And paradise emptied out. And the Old Testament saints came to the earth again, walked around on earth, and entered it with him in his rapture. The next rapture takes place in 1 Thessalonians for the church, the bride to be resurrected, to be raptured into glory. We which are alive and remain, that's the body left on earth, will not prevent or hinder them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound first, and the dead in Christ shall rise. See, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So what we're saying, brother and sister, here this morning, there's so much I wanted to talk about right here. Now when Jesus went to Lazarus' grave, and you'll find that in, I think in, uh, in, in, in um, my reference scripture would be St. John, I think it's 11, uh, 25 to 29, I believe it is. Um, you'll find where Jesus went to Lazarus' grave. And he said, um, he kneeled, knelt down, he, he cried, and he would probably went down on a knee. But Brother Branham said when he straightened back his frail shoulders, and when he said, Lazarus, come forth. What was that, brother and sister? Brother Branham said that was the voice of the archangel. He said the voice of the archangel is Christ in the bride. Amen. So just as Lazarus screamed out, I mean, I'm just like uh, Jesus screamed out and called Lazarus out of the grave. So with the Lord Jesus Christ in the bride, scream out, hallelujah. Oh, I'm typing. Amen. And the sleeping saints will rise up. Amen. What would cause that, brother? Call you coming to perfection by seven spirits. Seven spirits of God must come in you. You must climb the statue of a perfect man in faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love, brotherly kindness and the Holy Ghost must come upon you. Now what, what, when that happens, you'll be, you'll be screaming out. You must go to Calvary as we preach in the Easter service. We had a great Easter services. Five wonderful messages. You must die on Calvary. And when you die on Calvary, the Holy Ghost Amen. Going to quicken you. Hallelujah. And you're going to go and preach to the souls that are lost. You're going to watch Satan in the eye. And you said, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grief, where is your victory? And then you'll, you'll, you'll come upon, you'll be walking upon your change. Transform. And when that happened, the sleeping saints will arise and walk with you for 30, 40 days. Just like Jesus, it must happen to the bride exactly. Why? Because she's bone of his bone. She is flesh of his flesh. She is spirit of his spirit. Amen. And she is him. Hallelujah. Walking upon the earth. Hallelujah. Because he is living in her. The fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what happened? Let's go back. As we talked about in, uh, on our Easter services. Jesus Christ is on the cross. He was nailed on the cross like about 12 o'clock. I believe they say. They estimate he was about there 12 o'clock. He was bleeding. There's only a gallon and, so, and a little more than a gallon amount of blood in a man's body. And the blood was oozing out. Nobody was trying to, to stop the bleeding and put a talk. You know, to, no, he was bleeding from a beating. Amen. With the stripes upon his back. He got 39 stripes. Because the, if you give a man 40 stripes, that he will die. Amen. But 39 stripes just before, he's just at the edge of death. Amen. And they beat Jesus. His blood is running down. He's on his way to Calvary. He's heading to Calvary. He was crucified at about 12 o'clock. And when he was there on the cross, amen, his, his chest was being compressed. He couldn't breathe properly. He was hanging. Blood was coagulating. Blood and water was co coagulating in his heart and his in lungs. He was dying a cruel death. A lot of pain and agony. Amen. No, not, to you, not to for you to feel sorry. It's for you to understand what he has done for you this morning. Is what he has laid his life. Why do you still be stubborn and, and rebellious against him? He laid his life down for you. Forget about whoever to, to, done you evil and done you wrong. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Get the Holy Spirit to anoint you. Get him to quicken you. And then all the things of the world. How somebody talk to you. How somebody uh, treat you in your job. How your, your family treat you. What is say evil against you. How your husband treat you. All these things. Whatever it is will fade away. Why? Because you love Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is your Savior. Is your God. So he died. Uh, he's dying on Calvary now. And between, between uh, 3 and, uh, let me see, I'm trying to get the time in. 
um, uh, between uh, 12, uh, I think it was for three hours, between the sixth, uh, the sixth and the ninth hour. Amen. That three hours, there was darkness upon the face of the earth, uh, upon the face of Jerusalem at that time. And when you go down in history, you'll find that was caused by an eclipse. I think it was a, either a solar or lunar eclipse. The, 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 the sun was blacked out. It was dark. The Bible says the sun went down in the middle of the day. Hallelujah. Why? Because nature was crying out. The Son of God was being crucified. God sent an eclipse in, the, in, the, in, the, in Jerusalem and Palestine around that time so that they could understand what was taking place as a sign that we could look back and we could see that the sign was for us now. What happened at the end of the eclipse? What happened? Jesus screamed, cried out with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. He died at the end of the eclipse. So he died like about three o'clock. I think it was, amen, three o'clock. Now the Sabbath was six o'clock. They had to, sundown was six something, I think. They had to take the body and put it in a tomb. But what happened when Jesus cried out? What happened at the end of the eclipse? A earthquake, a mighty earthquake shook Palestine. Oh, it was rocking on the earthquake. It was so bad that in the temple, the veil of the temple split down the middle. What that was showing us, that the way into the Holy of Holies was now open to everyone because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And you know, the bride has been, has been going through the, the trials all these years since the prophet has died. There were ministers that raised up to show the bride how to pre prepare for great translation faith. There were mighty men of God that raised up all these years. They preach across the world. One, in, one man was this, was a man called Joseph Coleman. Sure, everybody would say, Oh well he had his faults But tell me brother do you, Are you perfect too? You minister that's preaching Are you perfect? No you're not So everybody has their faults There was one man that perfect And that was Jesus Christ Not even brother Branham was perfect Brother Coleman wasn't perfect Paul is not perfect No one of them are perfect yet Until the spirit of adoption Comes upon the bride Hallelujah And she calls them out of the grave Oh hallelujah So this morning This man of God Took a message in 1965, December 26. He preached a message. The shout of the king is in the camp. The whole world was in darkness. Everybody would say the prophet is gone. The prophet died. What are we going to do? What are we going to say? Is he coming back to reveal the standards? Is he coming back to reveal the seals? And tell us more about what is going to happen. Abraham said all mysteries have been revealed. He spoke it. Amen. He spoke it. So Brother Coleman took up that mantle and he said the shout of the king is in the camp. And then God vindicated because in 1974, God poured upon Brother Coleman a revelation. Now you, you would say it's Brother Coleman revelation. is not. It's the prophet revelation. Brother Coleman got it from the prophet message. But, he was, but what happened? God showed him between the lines. When you read the prophet message, God must show you between the lines. There's a lot of things the prophet didn't say directly. But he say one thing and he say another. You got to get the Holy Spirit to read between the lines. And what happened? This man, Joseph Coleman, he read between the lines by the Holy Spirit and had a message that swept the world all over. Oh yeah, everybody say he broke up churches. He was this man. He, and every, uh, there are a lot of false things that went across the world. But I'll tell you personally, I knew the man, knew the man personally. I stood under his, his ministry for about 40 years. I was under his ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. But I tell you, my brother and sister, sure, he had his mistakes. Sure, I see his errors. I see his mistakes. He got upset and angry. He was diabetic. He, 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 when his blood sugar low, he got upset. But he was a man like everybody else. I get upset. You know, Jesus got upset when his blood sugar was low. He, went, he came, he didn't eat, he didn't eat food at, uh, at uh, Martha and Mary and Lazarus. Probably everybody was sleeping. He didn't get his uh, pita bread and all his, uh, his uh, whatever they eat and for breakfast. He didn't get it. So he's heading to Jerusalem. He was on his father's business. He was going to the temple to meet the people that was now coming in the early morning in the temple. And his sugar, blood sugar was low. He, could, he didn't eat. He was getting a little weak. He saw a fig tree down the road. He said, aha. I'm going to eat some fig tree, figs out of that tree. And when you get to the fig tree, there were no figs. And he got a little, uh, you know, uh, people say upset. But he, he was the son of God. He said, no man eat of you anymore. He called the life out of the tree. He was the one that gave life unto the tree. And what happened coming back? What happened? The tree was dried up. And the disciples said, ooh, this is something. 
by morning to evening, this whole tree dried up. So Jesus said, greater things that you do if you can believe. So Jesus had his issues too, but he was the only perfect man upon the earth. So Brother Joseph Coleman took a revelation. He held on that revelation. He was ridiculed. His family is ridiculed. There was this a man from Trinidad. Uh, he, he hated Brother Coleman's uh, inspiration and the word so much that he put a piece of uh, human uh, uh, feces in an envelope and posted it to Brother Coleman and said, to, this is what I think about your, your, your revelation. So he stood there, but he stood and he held on to what he believed. Why? Because God gave him revelation. Just like God, I believe give me revelation of the seven steps that uh, are that, uh, here for the, uh, the, the, uh, the rapture. This is what I believe. This is a revelation God give me. Amen. You doubt it? Prove to me it's wrong according to the Bible. Prove to me it's wrong according to, um, to Brother Branham's message. Prove to me it's wrong according to Brother Coleman's message. This is the word of the living God. This is revelation. This is a revelation of the rapture. Do you have the revelation of the rapture? What is the revelation of the rapture? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me when God stepped down with an open book? You can't tell me that. You can't tell me what he's doing. You, I could show you in the word and the prophet message where God came down in March 1963 and opened the seals to Brother Branham. What was taking place? The angel of Revelation 10.1 with the open book came down and gave it to the prophet to open up all the revelation that is hidden since before the foundation of the world. So what am I saying, brother and sister? You got to line up with the history. But we can't go back and, and line up uh, in the days of the prophet and say only the prophet, only the prophet, only the prophet, only the prophet message, only prophet message. No, I agree with that. I agree with you. You must read the prophet message. You must listen to the prophet message. If you don't do that, you will not grow. You will not live a true Christian life. You must live it. You must li if you could listen every day, it would be great. Fantastic. But you can't get that all alone out of the prophet message because you don't have the gift of wisdom. You don't have the gift of an apostle. You don't have the gift of a pastor. You don't have the gift of an evangelist. You don't have a gift of a teacher. You don't have the gift of a prophet. So you have to depend on that. Why? The word says that I've sent you these five gifts. For the what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the working of the ministry. Till you all come to the what? The statue of a perfect man. You can't bypass that. So minister friend, big dignitary in the message, you are bypassing the revelation of five ministering gifts and you cannot come to perfection. You can't make the rapture. Anybody, all you saints out there, all you believers, that just believe that that's all, only the prophet message. Even this, even this inspiration of Brother Coleman, there are, there's a minister there. That's all he's doing is play, playing the tapes. Brother and sister, you can't come to perfection that way. You cannot. God must send you five ministering gifts. Listen to the word of the Lord, brother, today. You need to, my good friend, listen. You can't sit there and just listen to prophet tape every Sunday. Sure, you go and sing songs and are happy and worship and you do the work in the computer and you, you bless one another and you eat and you fellowship. That's not enough, brother. That is not enough. Amen. I have been listening to prophet message since I age about eight or nine, nine years old. I've been reading so don't, don't tell me, brother and sister, that um, you must listen only to the prophet message. That's wrong. So come to perfection. So I don't know how I've gone off in, 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 in that, but when Jesus died, before he died, he screamed out with a loud voice. So isn't the bride supposed to do that also? God drive you to Calvary all his years. They reject you on your job. Your wife reject you. Your husband reject you. Your children reject you. All of them say you're kind of crazy. You're going to cuckoo. You're going fanatical. Oh, you are going through what? You're going through your trial. You're going through your tribulation. You're coming up to Calvary. you dying out to yourself. You don't stop and say, I curse you in Jesus. No, you don't do that. But you die to yourself. As a sheep go up to the, to the slaughter, you don't say anything. You leave them alone. Sure, maybe you might get angry sometime and say, well, you know, you shouldn't say that. You should read the word. You should try and see what is going on. Sure, but then you have to overcome that. Let, them, let, let, let God deal with them. I can't save nobody. I can't save. All I could do is to preach to you with the word. And if you don't listen to the word, then bro brother, there are two things for you, the tribulation period or hell. 
If you don't listen to this word of God that is preached to you, now you, now I know you know you, you're gonna you feel a, uh, you know what who he feel he is. I'm a son of God with a gift that is there in Ephesians 4:11 ministry, waiting for the adoption, waiting for God to say, "This is Him, this is my beloved Son." But in the meantime, the gift of God unto you is the word of God unto you, is the voice of God unto you. If you don't listen, brother, you're lost. If you don't listen to the word of the Lord, you're lost. If you reject this, if you condemn it, you're lost, brother and sister. If you don't understand it and you just leave it alone, well, you might go through the tribulation period. But you must know that seven thunders give you faith for rapture and grace. Seven thunders must be that bride's revival. You must believe that, brother. You must see that, sister. That seven thunders is a way to climb the seven statue of a perfect man. And the seven thunders are the seven voices of these seven church age messengers preaching unto you perfection. How can you bypass that? You bypass that, you're on your way to hell or you're on your way to the tribulation period. Amen? It could be how big church you have, how much money you have, all this kind of, it doesn't matter. But brother and sister, if you don't come to this word, if you don't come to it, you can't come to it unless you get the Holy Ghost. You must receive the Holy Ghost first. Oh, my, my guy, friends that are preaching the Holy Ghost, yeah. Condemning them, you're on Facebook and you're on pornography and you all just come and repent and come and repent. Yeah, there are always people like that in the church. But what about the people who are seeking the Holy Ghost or who have the Holy Ghost? Uh, what are you preaching them? Are you preaching them their promises? What did Paul say? Laying aside, you know, not, uh, you know, not forgetting, but laying aside the, the, the of water baptism or repentance of sin. Let us do what? Let us move on to perfection. And how can you come to perfection except by seven thundering voices turning around to you? Do you know you have to become white light? You have to become white light. And the only way you could become white light is that when those seven color, rainbow color spirits of God that is in you flash through charity. Then you, that's the only way you can make rapture. You're gonna make, not going to make the rapture with, seven color, with six colors, you know. You're not going to do it. It's when seven colors now focus through charity, the headstone coming down. Glory to God, you become like him. Like his glorious body, you caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now, you wouldn't be able to stay on the earth too long because that's the perfect love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'm really going off, way off the topic, but God knows every heart and the need of every heart this morning. Amen. So this morning, um, you know, I want to show you that a type. Could it be? We have an eclipse coming up. It's coming tomorrow. What is going to happen? Has the bride already gone? No, I'm saying, I'm just saying, brother, I'm not prophesying. I'm just looking like Brother Branham, 1962. He was saying, sirs, is this the time? So I'm saying, sirs, brother, sister, is this the time? Is this the time? Just like Jesus, an eclipse, and then he died. Is it the bride is going to die out tomorrow? Is it going to happen? She's going to die out. And just before she dies out, she's going to scream out with a loud voice. And what is a voice? A voice is the word of God coming to you. A voice is the voice of the archangel. He's speaking unto you, telling you how to get ready. That's the voice. So Jesus screamed with a loud voice. And the earth, there was an earthquake. So could it be, brother and sister, could it be an earthquake, a, a major earthquake take place? No, I'm, I'm thinking about where these two eclipses intersect. Amen. The night that uh, uh, August 21st. Uh, 2017 eclipse, seven years ago, and this eclipse that is tomorrow, April 8, 2024, where they intersect is dead on the, what you call the, the Madrid Fault, the Madrid Fault, and that Madrid Fault has been shaking a little bit and uneasy. We've seen earthquakes taking place all over the world. Right in New York, there was earthquake that hadn't taken place for 175 years, uh, such a strong earthquake, and people are concerned, and they're having after if shocks taking place and they warned them they don't know what might happen could they get a bigger earthquake there's aftershocks taking place in New York so you who are sitting in New York brother get ready get ready get ready understand that you must come to perfection by through the five ministering gifts that are sitting in the in, in, in the bride now as I said to you brother and sister God and God alone could open your eyes I can't all I could do is to give you his word, give you his message. No, you could stay in your church, yeah, sure, but come feast on, my, on, on the table I'm, I'm serving at. 
Come and feast at the Bright Age Christian Fellowship YouTube channel. Come and feast at the table. Come and hear the word of the Lord. Come and love the Lord Jesus. Come and fellowship with us. You can say whatever you wanted, whatever church you are. You don't have to say you belong to the Bright Age Christian Fellowship. But come, come to the, the, the come and dine. Oh, so suppose uh, we have a great earthquake. That would tell me, you know what that would tell me? That would tell me that the bride is ready. The bride is ready to receive dynamics and charity. Because soon after that, Jesus died and went on down to, he preached to the souls that are lost. He preached to the souls that are lost, you know. Who are the souls that are lost? They rejected the word of God. They speak evil about it. Amen. The Abraham says souls are emperors now. They're going to be preached to. You're going to hear this word. And, you went, and, then, that's the, and then preach also to the foolish virgins. The foolish virgins will, in Matthew chapter 25, will realize, wait, is the resurrection on? Earthquake, California sink into the sea. Oh, what's going on? And I'm not, I'm not full up with the Holy Spirit. I don't have dynamics. I don't have rapture and faith. What, what, what is taking place? What's going on? Where, where? And then you see a brother. A brother you condemned all his years. Oh, he's some kind of fanatic. We don't want him preach to us no more because he's confusing the people. And I don't preach those things in my church. I don't preach those deep things in my church. Well, how are your people going to learn, Pastor? How are they going to learn about the word of the Lord? How are they going to learn about their promises? You preaching a Pentecostal message? No, worse. You preaching a Presbyterian message. We must weaponize uh, the, this knowledge that we have. Weaponize knowledge that you have. What? Brother, you, 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 you intellectual. Intellectual message. And all these people fall in. Oh, we love to hear intellectual message. We're feeling good. Go in a Presbyterian church and hear the same thing. The only difference is that what a bro the brother, the minister would be saying, oh, Brother Branham said and Brother Branham bring quotes. But it's an intellectual message. And some churches you could sit there and they don't even move. They clap their hands. You go in a Pentecostal church, denominational church, and they're praising and worshiping God more than you doing in your church. Oh, then what message church are you in? Where have you called out? All the Pentecostal and Baptists and Methodists and all these things have filtered, these demons have filtered back into your churches. Pastor, if you hear this message, filtered back into your churches, you should be ashamed of yourself. Get down on your knees at the altar and repent and tell the church, I, have been, I haven't preached to you seven thunder seeds. I haven't preached to you seven voices seeds. I haven't laid these seeds in you. And now you can't have a harvest. The tribulation period is for you. It's going to happen. When the sleeping, when California sink into the sea, I always thought that there would be two earthquakes. The first earthquake, when Jesus uh, uh, um, uh, at the cross cried out with a loud voice, there was an earthquake. The Bible says a major earthquake. And what happened? The, the Bible says the graves and so on, everything was shaken up and rent, and the rocks and all this stuff. But then he went down into hell. He went and preached to the souls of the lost. He went down into hell, grabbed the keys of death, hell, and the grave from, from Satan, went up into paradise, meet uh, Isaac and Rachel and Rebecca and all of them, said, come on, folks, let's go. The sun is rising. And he came on the earth first. But before he came on the earth, the Bible said there was a strong earthquake that rolled away the stone for him to come out of the grave. A strong earthquake. So this is what happened. Amen. That this strong earthquake, I believe that earthquake could be California. Because when Jesus rose from the dead, all the sleeping saints rose up with him. What was that, brother and sister? Just the same life of the Lord Jesus Christ must be in the life of the bride. So when Jesus screamed out, and after an eclipse, he screamed out. And what happened? An earthquake. Could it be this eclipse tomorrow? That the bride is screaming out. I'm screaming out tonight. I'm screaming out this morning. I'm crying out and begging you, brother and sister. Come to the Lord. Understand this is the end. We are dying out to ourselves. It is no longer me now. It's the he has come down from heaven. And has inhabited the body of the, of the people. The dynamics is here. We are waiting for resurrection power. We are waiting for that call to the resurrection. It's coming, brother. Could the call to the resurrection be tomorrow, soon after the, sleep, the, uh, the call to the resurrection, which is the voice of the archangel, could it start being in the people to, from tomorrow? Is that everybody is looking at the sky. It's a great event that is taking place, brother and sister. I'm crying out to you this morning. While I'm dying out to myself this morning, dying out to how I feel. You think I feel very, very good. I'm, I'm not well too. 
We all suffer in our own way. Brother Bram said he still have to hold on to the pul pulpit so he wouldn't fall over. Ministers go through their own thing. I've I had to wait this. Uh, last night I'm praying. I hardly sleep. I, I don't know. I'm praying. I'm getting up. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm between sleep and wake praying. I might be snoring. Yeah, my wife might snore. But I was between sleep and wake. I don't know how much hours I had sleep. I'm crying, waiting, Lord, what do I tell the people? There's an there's a, a eclipse tomorrow. What do I tell them? How do I, what do I tell them what's going to happen? How can we be, Lord, I want to know what to do. I get up 5 o'clock. I got dressed. I got to eat. Trying to eat while drinking my coffee. I'm looking. I'm reading things. Sometimes I read news because that's how he gave me something. You know, like Brother Branham was coming uh, from hunting. And he saw a cigarette pack on the ground. And he took it up. And he looked at it. And it says, a thinking man filter. And Brother Brown preached a message on that. So you could come with, the message could come from anywhere. He's sovereign. And I had a great fellowship with my granddaughter last night that we talk about this great eternal God. So we, I wasn't worried, but I'm concerned. Did I do something wrong? Would he use me this morning? There are people waiting. There are people in Africa and India and Pakistan and, and all over the world waiting here in America, waiting to hear from you, Lord. And I'm standing in the gap. I'm dying out to myself this morning. I cried out to him. And it didn't come to maybe about 7 o'clock. And then I started to get things together. Then the, 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 I hear that voice, call to the resurrection by the voice of the archangel. Glory to God, it is him. So you think I'm, it's me speaking this morning, it is him that is speaking unto you. This is the word of God to you, brother and sister. If you would believe it, it will be sinking into your heart and it will blossom into the word of the living God. So this morning we're talking about a call to the resurrection by... The voice of the archangel. So Christ died. He screamed out a loud voice. What was that voice? The voice that Jesus Christ screamed out, shook the grave. All that. That was the voice of the archangel. But of course it took 39 hours before it, came, it was manifested. So who knows? Today, brother and sister, the last day, the, the 7th of April, when we dine out to ourselves, dine out our own way, dine out what we think, dine out, Lord, I have financial problem. Lord, I have, I'm sick. Lord, my stomach hurt. My, I'm, I'm, I have heart problem. Lord, I have diabetes. I have all these things. Die out all that. It doesn't matter. If he calls me home, it doesn't matter. I'll be in glory. But if he puts me here, I must fight the good fight. I must battle Satan on every front. Don't you think, you think I don't battle Satan on every front as a minister? Brother, I used to get depressed. He got the blues. He, 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 yeah, he, things are happening all around. The devil press him. And I go, I go through the same thing. I got the blues too. I got to uh, feel, uh, uh, you know, uh, oh Lord, uh, nothing, Lord, who is listening? Does anybody care? Does uh, Lord, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling. I go through my things too. And you go and I die to myself, brother. And sister, I've been dying the last few days, the kind of things I have to go through. Dying to myself. Waiting. Don't know what is going to happen. I, I'm, I can't see all the things going to happen. He does. But what I've learned to do is that, I, like Jesus said, into thy hands do I commit my spirit and commit myself. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. So could it be that a bride today, today, 4th of April, uh, 7th of April, 9, 2024, could it be that today the bride is dying out to herself and she's screaming out now. She's screaming out. Well, um, she's dying to herself. While this eclipse is taking place tomorrow. And then she'll scream out at the end of the, e the eclipse. And say what? Oh God, into I coming up to heaven. And with a loud voice. I, I, I probably, I don't know what he said. He probably said, I don't know what he said. He said, Father, it is finished. Oh yeah. The Bible said it is finished. One of the books of the New Testament said, Jesus cried with a loud voice. And said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. So the bride is going to cry out. Cry out what? Time no longer. Time no longer, brother and sister. The voice of the archangel. A call to the resurrection. And when she screams out like that, brother and sister, just like in Jesus' time, it was 39 hours of 39 to 40 hours, just like in Jesus' time. I don't know it might be. 39 days, 40 days. No, I don't know. Because uh, um, Passover is on the 22nd of April. I don't know. No one knows. Brother Bram did say that, uh, uh, that um, uh, around, around uh, uh, Easter, he's expecting resurrection. Now, this Easter that we have gone through is not the real Easter. No, sir. It's not the real Easter. Uh, what is the Easter? 
is Easter comes around. Easter comes around when? Around Passover. That's when the real Easter is. So what we have gone through is not the real Easter. Um, so what is happening? The real Easter is coming in April 22nd. Could it be the sleeping saints? They're going to be a shaking and a shaking in California. Going to, going to sink into the sea? Father God, oh great eternal God, may you, uh, you come down, oh Father, and, and help the people understand that the, the, the resurrection is on. The voice of the archangel is on. Amen. It's a call to the resurrection. The sleeping saints has to arrive. I am I have to arise. But you know, but before the sleeping saints arise, what must happen? The bride must come to perfection. You must have that resurrection call inside of you. You must experience, like I was telling some saints and believers, I've noticed that before a minister could preach unto you something, he must experience it himself. Amen. Before Brother Branham preached unto you the abiding glory, Brother Branham had to experience it himself. He experienced it in the bull. He experienced it with a with a bull. He experienced it with the hornets. He experienced it with a little fishy. He must experience that himself so he could preach it to the people as as, as present tense. But a Coleman, in, uh, you know, he experienced seven thunders, seven voices, seven church age messenger. He experienced these seven living spirits inside of him and he could preach it no he did not yet get the fullness of charity because when you get the fullness of charity your bodies change amen your bodies change no brother Coleman had a taste of it amen he had a taste of that that charity dropping down because what he preached charity the voice of the archangel oh glory to God hallelujah we expecting God to do something we expecting him to step forth in his glory in his might and rescue his bride from this world we expecting him to touch us and where we change from corruption to incorruption we are waiting for that time corruption to incorruption is at the voice of the archangel corruption to incorruption is a call to the resurrection because when we are changed back to how Adam was oh glory to God hallelujah We'll have power and authority over the elements. No, it's not you again, brother and sister. Remember, it's never you. Who it is, it is Christ in you. You are just a vessel, but he's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to tell you what to do. Jesus himself said, I do nothing until my father show me what to do. So this morning, what we're looking for, brother, the power of the resurrection. We're waiting for that call. Oh, hallelujah. We're waiting for the voice of the archangel to come in you. Brother Branham said, your body is going to revolve around that word that is in you and you'll be changed. You'll come back just like a, like a, a change in the body. Amen. Let me just read it here. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Branham says here, um, in the Easter seal, uh, 2nd of April, huh, 2nd of April, 1961, paragraph, uh, paragraph 143, the same thing he's going to do next. And remember, after that sign was manifested fully to Abraham and his group, then the next thing come was the change. See, you know, I didn't even know I was going to read this. The next thing come is a change. And we have done seen everything through justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, placing of the Son, and signs and wonders, being His presence to discern the thoughts of the heart and so forth. And He said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now I interject here. You see what He just says? It's justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, placing of a Son. So you can't stop at the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You must climb those seven steps. Add word upon word upon word upon word. And then the Holy Ghost comes on upon you. Just like Jesus in Mount Transfiguration. And quicken that word that is in you. And then what? Your place son. Visit him with any angel, Brother Ramsey. Give him something. What something? Give him a revelation. Shake the world. Well, not world, not the outside world. But shake the believers in the world. I know, I've seen it shake believers in the world in this group, this group that, oh brother, you're not preaching mainstream message. It shook them. Brother, the seven thunders that you're talking about is incomplete. It shook them. Amen. What was it? Revelation. When, 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 when we came up to the seven, these seven uh, steps of that, that show, brother, um, that, the seven steps of revelation. It shook them. One brother said, oh, I, I've never seen this. I have to go study this. Shook them. Gave him something. Shake the world. Amen. What is he saying? Jesus Christ is saying, this is my son. Hear the word of the Lord. And if you don't hear him, you're cut off. Just like Jesus said, if you don't believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. 
And I say to all his scribes and his Pharisees, spirit out there, if you don't believe that I am he that was sent by, by God to speak unto you, you'll die in your sins. You'll die in your sins. You'll go to hell if you reject it and say evil against it. Beware, brother. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The sin is laid at your door this morning. Amen. Then Ezekiel said, he said, the Lord told him, prophesy against the righteous. And if he's in iniquity and he doesn't repent, his righteousness all he has wouldn't even count. He said that. Amen. And he said that if you don't tell him, my, your, the blood is upon your hand, Ezekiel. So the blood is all of my I told them, brothers, I said, the blood is all of my hands. The blood of all these people. You're leading them into some false doctrine of flat earth. Amen. When the prophet said that's a lie, that's a lie from the devil. Ain't no flat earth. Nonsense. And you who are, you are deceived, brother. Brothers, you're deceived. <clears throat> and you ministers that know that this lie is being propagated all over the world and you're not doing something about it. You are deceived also. You're not listening to the word of the Lord from the prophet and going from church to church and preaching nice messages. Oh God, will, uh, you know, uh, Noah crossed the Red Sea. I mean, Noah uh, was in the ark and Moses crossed the Red Sea. And, and uh, these are things about the angels and these are things you must understand. And you're not telling them how to get perfect, how to come to perfection by climbing those seven steps, by listening to seven voices of seven church ages. Oh, hear what the Brother Abraham says. Now we have done, seen everything through justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, placing of the Son, and the signs of wonders of Him being His present to discern the very thoughts of the heart and so forth. And He said, As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the day and the coming of the Son of Man. We see that taking place right now. What was the next thing? The change of the body. Now show that we are looking for an expected son. Glory, is that right? We cannot meet him in these bodies. We are changed back to young men and women. Still, we cannot meet him because we have to meet him in the air. There has to be something done besides change us back to young men and women. We got to be changed and caught up in the air to meet him. And the next thing coming is the rapture of the church and the change of the body of the sleeping saints to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. End of quote. Two changes. I've preached this for years, for a while. No, I've not even heard any minister trying to preach this. But that's a revelation, brother. You've got to understand. It's a revelation. And if a man has revelation and he preaches to you, you've got to accept it. You've got to believe it. You may not understand it, but you've got to believe it. Don't say, well, I don't know about that. I don't see that. Believe it. Say, brother, but I believe it. Amen. Believe it. Oh, hallelujah. What it was, a change from corruption to incorruption and a change from mortal to immortality. That's two separate changes. Brother Abraham say the change from corruption to incorruption is a change of this body. We'll be young men and women just like uh, how Adam was or I'm sorry, yeah, Adam and or, um, I'm sorry, Abraham and Sarah was change in our body but there's a next change coming. We, we, we will not be interdimensional beings yet but we have, we, can, we have control over the earth by the Holy Spirit we could move from, we could disappear here and appear somewhere else. We could walk through the walls. We could, when time to get to Jerusalem, we'll get to Jerusalem. Why? You change from corruption to incorruption. Change. Waiting for that theophany to come when Jesus comes. To change from mortal to immortality. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the next thing is the change of the body. And then the sleeping saints rise. That's what we're looking for. Oh, hallelujah. Adoption, paragraph uh, 34. The church has got to be so perfectly. No, eh, eh, let me just read this out. That's the way the church bringing, God bringing the church. We are fitly joined together, one heart and one accord. That rapture will be hundreds of thousands. That's right. But they'll be all made up in 6,000 years of salvation. 6,000 years go back. The church has got to be so perfectly like Christ till Christ and the church can unite together and the same spirit. And if the spirit of, G of Christ is in you, it makes you live the life of Christ. Act the life of Christ. Do the works of Christ. He that believe it on me, the works that I do shall he do also, Jesus said. See, we are going to have a great ministry coming that's exactly like the life of Christ. I interject. What is exactly like the life of Christ? He preached the souls that are lost. What is exactly the life of Christ? He died on the cross soon after eclipse. What exactly is the life of Christ? He screamed with a loud voice and there was an earthquake. 
This is going to happen, brother and sister. And when it happens, brother, you, you come back to the state, hear the word of the Lord. You better get, when, if there's a serious earthquake, maybe around the Madrid Fault or whatever it is in America here, you better get ready because the next earthquake is California. Please, I'm laying out before you this morning. Amen. Please get ready. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. What will ministry come in? That's exactly like the life of Christ. What does a ministry identify? The coming of the Lord. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now you say, well, how, how can we be changed? Je the Lord, the Lord uh, who looked down in Sodom, in the days of Abraham, saw the wickedness of Sodom, and he wanted to go talk to his son uh, Abraham. He, he took some, some ashes and, and potassium or whatever, and he blew in a body and he inhabited that body. He took made two other bodies and said, okay, Michael, go in one, Gabriel, go in one. Let's go down to meet uh, Abraham. Now, according to Brother Branham, he said, and he went down there, and what happened? He sat down with, uh, he sat down with Abraham, three of them, three men. They were men. And Brother Branham says, so what about you people who don't eat meat? He said, God eat calf. <laughs> Jesus eat, I mean, uh, this man that came, Elohim came down to Brother Branham, to, um, to, um, to Abraham, sat down and eat calf and buttermilk and cheese and, and bread. So what are you talking about eating meat? <laughs> Brother Branham said that. Amen. So what it is he's doing, the same way he could change your body. He could transfer. He's a great eternal God. Don't you understand who he is? He's a supernatural being. Seven color rainbow spread existing all through eternity. Oh, hallelujah. But when that voice of the archangel is forming you, what is going to happen, brother? You're going to be changed. We know in, I know in page 8, and it's like, it's like oh, 9 minutes to 12. Amen. Oh, blessed, I'll bypass all this. Now, their first resurrection, that's what we're looking for. One day, brother, brother, here, let me just read it here. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, for him, I will I accept. I believe the Bible statement of the Lord Jesus Christ is true. I believe all that the Bible says is true, that there will be a resurrection of the dead. And those, who, those which are waiting shall be changed and make a body like his and be caught up together to meet him in the air and forever be with the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. And the rapture, paragraph 178. One day there come a blast from heaven and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then them Old Testament states back yonder who are waiting will blast forth and come out of their first and go into the resurrection and will drop right in, going into the sky. These old mortal bodies change and make like unto his own glorious body. What a parade that will be when it starts heavenward. Some of the de these days, in that rapture in time that lies ahead. Oh, proudly displaying the blood of Jesus Christ upon their chest. The message of God in the hour. Hour! The message of God in the hour that they lived in. That's the hour we're looking forward to, brother. So, Brother Branham, I'm in the court. Brother Branham is saying, the message of the hour that they were living in just before they caught up in the rapture. He said, we are looking forward to that hour. So it didn't come in 1965, 21 days before Brother Branham died. It didn't come. And then we know about Moses and Elijah coming back to preach to the Jews. Amen. Hear what Brother Branham say. Hear. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, thy seed shall possess the, the gates of the enemy. Paragraph 27. And death has no gate for us. Death doesn't have. Brother Branham, no it doesn't. What about that? You think you'll die? I'll never die. I can't die. I'm already dead. I'm buried and my life is hidden in God through Christ, sealed by the Holy Ghost. The devil couldn't get me if he had to. Blessed and holy is he that is part in the first resurrection on which a second death has no power. We have overcome because Christ overcome for us. Amen, amen, amen. So Brother Abraham say, you are eternal because of the Holy Ghost living in you. He said, no, the devil is not eternal. The devil and the angels are not eternal. He said, because they were created beings. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Because you are part of God. You are eternal being. Amen. Brother Abraham said, what are you afraid of? Possess every gate. Death can't stop you. The grave can't stop you. Amen. Now the second resurrection is when Matthew chapter 25 um, about the sleeping virgins and we don't have time to talk about the second resurrection I'm going to put a note here that we will talk about it another day the second resurrection and um, oh praise God I put a date here 4 7 
24. So uh, the second resurrection, we can't talk about that. But when you die with the Holy Ghost, you're coming up in the first resurrection. But if you die without the Holy Ghost, you're waiting until the second resurrection to come up. And we talked about that uh, before. Amen. But the, 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 the sleeping virgins, if you reject the seventh under revelation, if you reject the seven spirits of God to climb seven steps and you don't speak evil about it, but you live a holy life, you live a dedicated life, you will die in the tribulation period. You are, uh, the, the bomb will come and you will be destroyed, but you will come up in the second resurrection. So how, how it is, brother? Aim for coming up in the first resurrection. Amen. You say you got the Holy Ghost. If you had the Holy Ghost, brother and sister, you would have followed the word of God coming from the prophet. From the prophet. And then for Jacob, grace, Joseph, perfection. And then from Jacob, grace, Joseph, perfection is that the shout of the king is in the camp. And from the shout of the king is in the camp, on a some have compassion. And from some have compassion, you would have come up to seven thunder, seven voices, seven church ages, 1974. And then you have come up to 1983. You have to be identifying the history. You must be connected. Anything outside of that, it's lost, brother. You're down, you're lost, and you could be just a tribulation period seed. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, and what will happen? You have to be, you'll be purged. If you don't believe that I am He, Lord Jesus Christ said, if, I, if you don't believe that there are seven thundering voices in, a, in the uh, man of God, then brother, then you'll die in your sins. Here what Brother Abraham said, the first seal, uh, paragraph 120. Now notice this type. The reason they die out, they go through the purging of trial and tribulation because they're not actually under the blood. They claim they are, but they are not. Amen. The bride of Christ doesn't go on the end of court. Bride of Christ doesn't go under judgment or purging. Question and answers. Paragraph 52. That's for the elect. They'll go in the rapture. There'll be a remnant here left on earth that will go through the persecution and the great tribulation. The church will be caught up in the rapture. Amen. That's what Brother Abraham said. End of quote. Amen. Now here what he says on the, in, this quote, in this quote here. Um, in uh, the Smyrna church age. He in the Laodicea church that overcomes what? Overcomes the Nicolaitans, overcomes the things of the world, overcomes this denomination, overcomes this priesthood, overcomes everything of the world that sells out and loves Christ, you will not be hurt of the second death. Why? He has got eternal life. Eternal life cannot die. Jesus said, He that heareth me has eternal life and shall never die and I'll raise him up in the last day. And there's only one eternal life, and that is God, and that's what we try even for. There's so much more quote that we have to go. I'll go and it's like almost 12 o'clock. I'll have to bypass this, amen. I'll have to bypass all these. And let me get to, um, let me get to that voice of the archangel. Oh, praise God. I mean, there's so much things I could tell you about, about uh, what's going to happen, total annihilation of the world and what will happen after a thousand years. Here what Brother Ram said, Deity of Christ, 1949. He's praying a prayer. I don't want to go like a coward, Lord. I want to be like how you went, Lord. Not try to wrap the whole robe around, but wrap the robe of Christ, the Holy Ghost, around me. As Paul did and said, Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Enter that, cold, that dark chamber among those who are dead. Listening then for his voice of the archangel that shall sound and will be called out from among the dead to meet our Lord once again. Here it is, Brother Abraham directly said the voice of the archangel is going to call you out of the dead. And he said that the voice of the angel is the voice of Christ. And there's only one place Christ is and that Christ is in the bride. She's the final voice to the final age. End of quote. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Then the dead saints and the sleeping saints uniting together. And I believe in Jerusalem. And all together unite with Christ yonder for the wedding supper of the Lamb. Who is it going to be? Michael. Michael has something to do with resurrection. We know that. Check all the Bible. Michael has something to do with resurrection. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And proving his word. <clears throat> Let's just read paragraph, uh, second part of paragraph 236. And the bridegroom call will come right through this. When the Son of Man shall come down and come in human flesh to unite the two together. The church has to be the word. He is the word. And the two unite together to do that uh, and to do that, it will take the manifestation of the revealing of the Son of Man. Not a clergyman. I don't know. Do you see what I mean? It's the Son of Man. Jesus Christ will come down in human flesh amongst us. 
and will make his word so real, it will unite the church and him as one, the bride. And then she'll go home to the wedding supper. Amen. She's already united. We go to the wedding supper, not to the marriage. Now fill your flesh, self, all the flesh of mighty men, because the marriage of the Lamb has come. But the rapture is going to, is going to the wedding supper. When the world here unites with the person, when the word here unites with the person and the two become one and then it, it, what does it do? Then it manifests the Son of God, Son of Man again. Not the church theologian, the Son of Man, the word and the church becomes one. Whatever the Son of Man done, he was the word. The church does the same thing. Oh, Brother Bram saying the future home, paragraph 510. Just a little while, we'll be summoned. You hear? It's a call. It's a call. We'll be summoned. Then the rapture will come. Just a little bitty group like Enoch will be taken away. Revelation chapter 4, paragraph 149. There was a voice that called him. Oh, that voice. I can't get away from that. The voice of the one behind John. Amen. And the voice of Christ is the same one that summoned him. Let's just read it. Paragraph 150. That voice. Let's speak on that voice a minute. I got some scriptures wrote down here. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. And just listen over here what this voice is going to say. Now we all know what it's going to say. See? Without, before we read it, don't we? We know what's going to happen. The trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Is that right? You who were put in down, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. The voice, that voice was the voice of Christ. Is that right? The voice of Christ. But what did the Bible say? The voice of the archangel. So the voice of Christ is the voice of the archangel. Or the voice of the archangel, the voice of Christ. Paragraph 151. Christ! Here Brother Abraham said, the same voice that summoned John. Come up! And the same voice I said to John, come up, is the same voice I'll summon the church. You see, summon means to call. It's going to call, brother. Not just draw. It's going to call. Brother Branham is saying it. Believe it. If you don't understand it, believe it. The same voice summoned John. Come up. The same voice that said to John, come up, is the same voice I will summon the church someday. Summons the church. Also the same voice that summoned John to come up. Is the same voice that summoned dead Lazarus out of the grave. That same voice of the archangel. Christ is the voice of the archangel. Voice of the archangel. Oh, that trumpet voice of Christ. Summoned John to come up. The same voice summoned Lazarus. Did you notice at the grave of Lazarus? He spoke with a loud voice. Not just Lazarus, come forth. No, he said, Lazarus, come forth. It summoned him from the grave. Amen. Oh, the same voice shall summon when the dead in Christ shall rise for the trumpet. What is the trumpet? The voice of Christ. The same one sounded and summoned him up. He heard the voice like a trumpet sound and said, Come up here. A trumpet don't speak. A trumpet make a sound. But it's a voice speak. So there's a voice of the trumpet. And now the resurrection will be? How will the resurrection be? It will be in a moment. The twinkling of an eye. That's clear sounding voice. And he'll summon the church. Calling, come out of it. That's great summoning voice. God help me to hear it on that day. And when he summons me to appear on high, when the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, if I'm alive, I'll be changed in a moment. A twinkling of the eye and shall so the rest of them up to meet the Lord in the air. The trumpet voice sound loud, clear, loud. Mm, it will be the same, the same as a coming. And the first thing you know, while I was talking across the room, a little light. Now, Brother Abraham is identifying the angel that came to visit him. He said, now I saw this little light and it was talking to me. It was uh, like in, a, 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 in a different tongues. But here what he says, he said, uh, he said, but we got a victory. We fought through many victories and a victory, vic great victory is coming. And it's that same angel the Lord is going to lead you. He's going to appear to you maybe. A command that said that Michael has to visit you. Has to because he's a, the angel of the resurrection. He has to visit you. And here what he says, we complete, our complete V-Day will be soon when the Son of God will break the skies and scream with the voice of the archangel and he shall come again and the grave shall open and the dead shall walk out. And here, here's my closing quote here. Um, here. Will the church go before the tribulation? Um, 3rd of April, uh, March 1958. Quote, I want you to notice this now because we have to cut short here now. <laughs> and we have to cut short. On the account of the prayer line, did you notice what the angel said? I can't do nothing till you come hither. What was it? 
it was a message of deliverance. And before one speck of fire could fall from heaven, Lot had to get out of Sodom. And before one drop of rain fell from the heaven, Noah went into the ark. And before the atomic bomb can strike this nation, the church will go in the rapture to meet the Lord Jesus. And if the Sputniks and the missiles are set, and the hammers are all pulled back, and angels are all standing in order, hallelujah, the great corridors of heaven is crowded full. The harps are all tuned. The great bands are already practiced up. There's a homecoming time pretty soon for the church of the living God who has been waiting his coming. Everything is in order. I'm so glad. End of quote. It's a call to the resurrection, brother, sister. It's by the voice of the archangel. You must get ready for this to hear this call. You must get ready to hear this call to change your body, to be transformed so that you could bring those sleeping saints out of the grave. God is dependent on you and me. Christ is dependent on you and I. Come my brother. Come my sister. If you don't understand this, say, Lord, I believe it. Open up my heart. Give me the Holy Ghost to receive it and God will give you the same. Shall we stand? Amen. I'm going to read a prayer from Brother Branham and then we'll pray. This prayer is from the future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride. From paragraph 505. Shall we pray this morning? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, take us now, Lord. Let the great shepherd, the great redeeming shepherd, the great shepherd who left glory, knowing that some of the, the attributes was lost on them, great valleys of sin, where the wolves and the animals would soon devour the little sheep. But he left the golden corridors and come down into earth and was made one of us so he could declare the love of God to us. There he found them, some of them in denomination, some of them in the house of ill fame, some of them on the streets, blind, some of them in the hedges and highways. But he redeemed every one that the Father had ordained him to redeem. And he commissioned us that we should live this part of the word for our age. And we see the great reformation of Luther in that age and Wesley and the Pentecostal. And now we are looking for the headstone of the city. Oh God, we know the age and the promise that we are given to this day. How that this is to be restored again. The evening light shall ripen the fruit of it. And it shall come to pass that there will be a day that cannot be day or night. It will be called, but in the evening time there shall be light. But that some glorious Son of God, manifesting himself in human flesh, up here on earth, making the promise live itself exactly, blinded to the eyes of the Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians and so forth. And today it repeats itself. And today it repeats again. The word being made manifest just as it was. The word knowing the secret of the heart, just exactly the way it was. As the scripture said, which cannot be, God, be broken. Oh God, to that to, for us to realize that. Help those now who raise their hand. May they buckle up a little tighter. Shod themselves with the gospel of peace. Put on the whole arm of God. Put the helmet down. Take the shield of faith. March forward from today on. Grant it, Lord. And just a little while will be summoned, Lord, when the rapture would come. Just a little bit of group, like Enoch, will be taken up. And then the ra remnant of the woman's seed that kept, not, that kept the commandments of God, the Jews, have the testimony of Jesus Christ, Gentile, will be hunted down like dogs and shall give their life for their testimony. Then one great morning, the great millennium for the honeymoon will start. And then the rest of the dead live not until the end of a thousand years. End of the thousand years. And then at the end of the thousand years, there was a judgment showing that harm was still in the ark and harm is still in the remnant. Ones that heard it and rejected it will be judged, will have to be judged. I'm getting old, Lord, and I say the same thing, Lord, I'm getting old. I haven't got many more sermons to preach, but I'm certainly trusting you. I'm looking for that city like my father Abraham. There is something in me tells me it's coming. I'm trying everywhere, O oh Lord, to spread the light and to call them. Let not one of these, Lord. How beautiful a while ago you revealed to me that from the circumference, circumference of over 1,500 miles, just one here and there, we sat together today that gathered in this little spot, waiting for that city to appear. We profess we are pilgrims and strangers, we outcasts. The heathen, the world laughs and makes fun of us. The religious denomination ridicule, but we are not moved by such things. Make us part of the word, Lord, unmovable. It shall come to pass in the last days. May it be us, Lord. We may be a considered among them. We ask this in Jesus' name. And Father, we come to the end of the broadcast. 
Father, I pray that the word be quickened to the people, Lord, kind of chopped up message. I tried, Lord God, but uh, may the word go out to the people. May they understand, Lord, uh, where we are sitting, Lord, what is happening, uh, uh, eclipse tomorrow, just like it was when Jesus was crucified on Friday, April 3rd, 8033, Lord. Exactly around the same time, Lord. And between the, 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 between the, 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 the 6th to the 9th or between 12 and 3, Lord. And then Jesus cried out, Lord, and then gave up the ghost. He said, it is finished. How much more the bride is dying on Calvary, crying out, saying, it is finished. And she be a testimony to the souls that will not be saved, lost, Lord. Father, oh God, Lord, our heart grieves because we know some are good people out there, but they come against your word and they speak evil against it. Father, Lord God, have mercy upon those, Lord God, that don't understand. Open up their heart to see the word. And then, Lord God, when we come to that perfection, when, mort when corruption put on incorruption and our bodies change in the voice of the archangel, will cry out, Lord, and the sleeping, our earthquake will take place and the sleeping saints will rise. Could it be the California earthquake, Lord, a mighty earthquake? Oh, Lord, but only you know these things and when these things are going to take place. Father, Lord, help us, Lord God, as we prepare for what is going to take place. Help us to not only prepare physically, but spiritually to be ready, Lord, when you are doing these things. Help the people, Lord. Let them understand that this is a great time. It's a scary time too, Lord, for the world. Judgment is about to strike. It's already earthquakes already. In, in New York, there was an earthquake shook 5.5, I think it was, and a 7.5 or 7.8 in Taiwan, Lord. Earthquakes are shaking the world. Oh, God, and if, Lord, and... We, who knows, Lord, could it be an earthquake will strike on the Madrid fault? And then when it shakes and shakes and shakes, Lord God, people will understand that this is a sign of the end because the next one, many believers see that the next major earthquake will be California. Father, help your people to understand and to see it, Lord. Touch your servant, Lord God, I pray. Give him strength, give his family strength. And my granddaughter, my wife, my granddaughters and my wife and my immediate family, Lord, open up their heart that they may see the word, that they may see the desperation of the hour. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah. When I... See the blood, oh, when I see the blood, hallelujah, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you, judgment is coming, all will be there, each one receiving justly his due find peace and comfort under the blood and i will pass will pass over you when i see the blood oh when i i see the blood hallelujah when i I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Let's sing the next verse, hymn number 34. Jesus, Jesus, Redeemer, died on the cross, or oh, died for the sinner. Feed all is due, and sprinkle your soul with the blood of the Lamb. And I will pass, will pass over you when I, I see the blood. And when I see the blood, hallelujah, when I... I see the blood, oh, I will pass, I will pass over you, oh, judgment is coming, all will be there, each one receiving, justly his due, no oh, hide in the saving, sin cleansing blood, and I will pass, will pass over you when I, 
I see the blood, and when I see the blood, hallelujah, when I, I see the blood, oh, I will pass, I will pass over you, oh, great compassion, oh, boundless love, Oh, loving kindness, faithful and true. Find peace and comfort under the blood. And I will pass, will pass over you when I, I see the blood. Oh, when I see the blood, hallelujah, when I. I see the blood, oh, I will pass, I will pass over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you be consecrated and dedicated. Watch the signs of the time. Be aware of what is going on around you, brother. Be consecrated, be dedicated, be in the spirit. Cry unto the Lord, he will hear your prayer. This is the hour of judgment, but it's also the hour that the bride has been looking for all since we were born. This is what we were looking for. This is the climax of God's great purpose, that he would live in our body and walk upon the face of the earth once again since he walked in Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ. So God bless you and keep us in prayer. We don't know what might happen Wednesday if you might want us to preach, but God knows. So God bless you all. Amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the demons will have to flee. When we come in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before in the precious name of Jesus, we would have the victory. Brothers and sisters, go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and trample on every demon, every spirit. He gave you the victory at Calvary. Amen.